In ALS, unless we understand more about how the brain works on a good day, we're not going to be able to go after therapies for when the brain gets sick. My sister Jennifer was 35 years old when she was diagnosed with ALS. ALS is characterized as a neurodegenerative disease. The, the cells that are targeted for destruction, they're called motor neurons. And motor neurons reside in parts of the brain, but, but many up and down the spinal cord. So um, as motor neurons get sick and go away in ALS, so go the brain's ability to tell our muscles what to do. And in ALS, paralysis is progressive, uh, ultimately affecting the breathing center, speech and swallowing centers. One of the first things we did as a family was identify pockets of research, medical research, that probably wouldn't spell therapies or cures for Jennifer, but we wanted to kind of put ALS on the research map, and that's exactly what we did. In 1998, when Project ALS formed, there were two known genes that affected a very small uh, subpopulation of patients. Whereas Project ALS and collaborators have now identified over 50 genes that contribute to ALS. So one of the other things that we saw as a huge challenge in the field was the lack of disease models. So we started the first freestanding privately funded laboratory for stem cell research in, in the United States. We were able to derive the first patient specific motor neurons from cells. So this technology is now known commonly as IPS, induced pluripotent stem cell biology. And the beauty of IPS is that the cells that you're deriving in that dish contain the DNA from the patient who provides that sample. Um, and that's, that's revolutionary. Today, we are able to assess potential therapies against an array of more predictive models. A family called the Hermstads had lost one of their identical twin daughters to a very aggressive form of ALS. Fast forward to the horrific news, JC is diagnosed with the very form of ALS that took her sister. This teenage onset form, it's known as FUS ALS, is so aggressive that Experts usually give it about a nine month course from diagnosis to death. Lori, Hermstad mom, mother to us all, calls us, we've got to do something. We all went together to a company called Ionis Pharmaceuticals, who had on one of their shelves in storage some ASO technologies, uh, antisense oligonucleotide approaches to interfering with gene expression in ALS. So we were all acting as this kind of uh, amoebic force. We start scouring and find someone at Charles River, a woman by the name of Lauren Black, who it turns out knows more about how to drive through these N of one therapies, I think than anyone in the world. And Charles River was able to really help us out to, to give the FDA what it needed to go into JC Hermstadt with the first human ASO against her genetic ALS. JC passed away, but in her spirit and memory, Ionis Pharmaceuticals is now sponsoring a phase three trial of the same ASO that went into JC for people with FUS ALS. And we feel that this is the beginning of a trend. I think people today understand that we have a better way to model their own individual ALS and that that should give them hope for the near future that there's just a lot of stuff coming online. Before she died, Jennifer Merritt and I had a lot of heart-to-heart -heart talks. I think Jennifer wanted us to go and be happy and be with our kids and, and just la di da go away. But Meredith and I knew the score. Like, we were onto something. And I think we're facing a new day. I know it. Based on an effort that Jennifer continues to drive with her magnificent spirit. <laughs>